Bonjour. We are going to be practicing a little bit with inversion, which I think is a tricky thing, and practice helps with um, getting used to the idea. Inversion is the most formal way to ask a question. It's also kind of a short way to ask a question, so I think it's really useful to be able to recognize and create your own inversion questions. Um, you're going to need something to write with and something to write on. So pause this and find a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And um, I set up a piece of paper as an example here. I actually would give myself a little more space to write. I just used a piece of paper that was too small. So I would list A, B, C, D straight down. And here are the four categories that we're going to practice with. Simple sentences, ones where you insert a T in the middle, ones where you insert a subject pronoun, and then the phrases il, ya, and C. You don't have to write that at the top. You could just write A, B, C, D. Um, each one has four to five questions. So we're going to practice. I will show you the answers as we go so that if something's not clear, hopefully you start to improve and get better. Don't just fast forward, get a piece of paper, and write down all the answers. That won't help you in the long run. Um, first of all, with simple inversion, we will take a sentence like Tu aimes le français. And the idea, and I've run out of room, the idea of inversion would be to flip the subject and the verb. So we need to know what the subject is and what the verb is, and you flip them. So, M, and we put a hyphen to connect these so that we know that it's an inversion question. That hyphen is a good heads up that we flipped them. M2, nothing else changes. So the rest of the sentence will always be in the same order. Let's see if I can fit a question mark in here. I highly recommend getting in the habit of using good capitalization and punctuation. Your English teachers will thank you. Put question marks at the end of your question. That way they're a question. M tu le français is what our answer is going to look like. M tu le français. Um, I'm going to do one more on my whiteboard here, and then the rest I'll just show you. Feel free to pause this video as you go so that you have time to write. Vous voyagez souvent? What am I asking here? Do you all travel? And if you don't know the word, I can't write today and fit it all in. The word souvent means often. So do you travel often? The subject is vous, the verb is voyager, flip them, flip them, pause this video, try to write it yourself, as I try to write it here. Voyagez-vous souvent? Now, note, both of these ask the same question, right? It's just that this one is much more formal than this one. This would be what you're more likely to write and see written out. Um, but it is a stylistic choice. If you ask somebody a question, vous voyagez souvent, you are getting your point across. You're doing great. So if inversion is something that is difficult for you, you don't have to use inversion every time. It's actually easier for me to do writing than it is speaking, but it's something that we'll practice with so that you're used to writing and speaking with inversion. Il mange de la pizza. My subject is il. My verb is mange. Flip them. Put a hyphen in between. You're done. Mange-t-il de la pizza? Um, oh, notice when I'm pronouncing this, I do hear the letter T more. Normally, you never hear the A and T on the end. Il mange de la pizza. But here, for a liaison purpose, I will say mange-t-il. De la pizza? Mange-t-il de la pizza? Two more simple inversion ones. Nous déjeunons à midi. Are we having lunch at noon? Déjeunons-nous à midi? Déjeunons-nous? You won't see that many questions with nous or je because you don't usually ask questions about yourself, um, but they exist. Tu penses que c'est drôle? Do you think that's funny? Tu penses que c'est drôle? Remember, you're only flipping the subject and the verb. Everything else stays in the same order. Penses-tu que c'est drôle? Penses-tu que c'est drôle? 
Hopefully those were easy for you and gave you a, a basis to start from. You flip your subject and your verb. That's it. Now, sometimes you're going to have where the verb and the subject that you flip, when you switch them, when you invert them, it means that you have lots of vowels hanging out side by side. Let me show you an example. Um, if I flipped this one, we're saying, are we going to the movies? If you were to read this, it wouldn't quite flow. You would say vowel, and French don't like all the sounds. So I'm not going to say vowel. They decided to split that up with a T, with a little hyphen T. It looks like this, vaton. Vaton au cinéma. So as you are inverting, especially when you're writing, if you see those vowels next to each other, we will insert a hyphen T hyphen to split it up. Looks weird. You get used to it. Elle aime nager. Try this one out. Pause this and try it. And if you flip it, it says ML. And we don't want ML. We want to say MTEL. So this is one more where we will put in a T. MTEL nagi. Sounds weird. You get used to it. Il parle espagnol. Does he speak Spanish? Becomes. Parle-t-il espagnol? Parle-t-il? On travaille ensemble? Are we working together? Pause this and try it out. Travaille-t-on ensemble? Travaille-t-on ensemble? We insert little T's whenever you have two vowels beside each other. This is only with inversion questions. You don't put T's in everywhere. Only with this kind of question. And then this question asks, she has the eyes blue. Does she have blue eyes? You only flip the first two words, insert a T. A-t-elle les yeux bleus? So that makes it a little bit harder. We're going to keep this idea of adding T's. Some of the other examples will do this. So be aware, if you have two vowels next to each other, split them up. Okay, what if the question has someone's name instead, or a noun? I can't flip the noun. You can only flip subject pronouns. So let me show you what you can and can't do. Does Marie love history? I will never fit a question mark on here, apparently. Sorry, I told you to use punctuation, and now I'm not. I can't do this. I can't flip people's names around. It just doesn't work. So what I can do instead is I'll keep her name at the beginning. That way I'm identifying that I'm talking about Marie. I have my verb, and I insert who I'm talking about. That's a girl. So I'm going to say L. And I'm going to put a little T in there. So now I've taken it up a notch. Marie adore telle l'histoire. So I've added the word L in there so that I can do subject pronoun verb inversion. You can only invert subject pronouns. That is je, tu, il, nous, vous, il, plural, on, elle. I can only do those words. So like number two, les élèves étudient. I can't touch les élèves. That stays where it is. But who is that? Is that je, tu, il, elle? It's a group of boys or girls. So I'm going to say it's il, plural. And I will insert it after the verb. Les élèves étudient il. And I don't need to add a T because there's already one in there. Christophe, does he draw? I'm going to insert the word il. Christophe, dessine t il? I must have a T in there to break up my sounds. Is the dog eating? Le chien mange. Le chien is a masculine um, animal. So I will say le chien mange-t-il? And then what if I have two guys, Guy et Fabien Parle, are they talking? 
Guy et Fabien parle-t-il? I hope this makes sense as we go. Um, the very last section is kind of easy once you get the hang of it. Il y a and c'est. So the phrase il y a means there is or there are. And when you flip it, when you invert it, it's like saying is there, are there. So il y a un gymnase. Is there a gymnasium? You will flip your subject, il, and your verb, a. So what do I do with that little y? It goes in the front. E, a, I need to insert a t. Yetil is the question phrase for is there, are there. So I'll say yetil en gymnase. Try this one. Il y a deux femmes. Are there two women? Y a-t-il deux femmes? Y a-t-il is the phrase are there. And then lastly, the word c'est, just to show you, um, it means it is. And when you break that up, it's actually the word ce and the verb a, it is. So when you flip them, it becomes s, s, this way, s. So if I want to say, is it different, and I want to be very formal, I'd say, est différent, est différent. C'est ton ami, is that your friend, becomes what? Est ton ami. Hopefully these exercises explained a little bit better and let you practice how to flip these phrases, um, how to invert them using this forma formation called inversion. Um, let me know if you have questions, and au revoir.